Wow. All right, so as you may be able to see here behind me, we got a little bit of a pink eye problem. So we need to get to treating some cows. Appreciate you watching. Let's dive right in. So again, good morning. We got a few eye problems here amongst the cow herd. You actually see this horn cow right here close by. You see she's kind of squinting. See where she's had tears running down her face there. At five or six, maybe seven of these Hereford cows primarily, of course, that um, got a little pink eye. So got a little feed, gonna Lucy doesn't take it off from me. Um, I'm gonna see if we can get them all in the pen here, sort off the ones we need and run them through and, and give them a dose of antibiotic to eliminate that little problem. All right, so we got, I think all the ones we're primarily concerned about in here, of course, quite a few that don't have any issues that will get sorted off, but got them little feed. So they get done munching that. We'll run who we don't need out of here, and then I just gonna be, I think, say five or six, and we'll talk a little more about the antibiotic we're gonna use, um, you know, how that works and whatnot. So yeah, there's one of the ones we definitely want to get treated. See that eye? That, that is actually, I believe that is the worst eye out of all of them. But another example, probably won't be able to tell, but that uh. That F1, that tiger striped cow. So, she actually has an old lesion um, or her right eye. Uh, the eye is fine, there's no active um, you know, issue or pink eye there, but, but she can't see how that eye should blind. Just has the one good eye, which is not too big of a deal as long as nothing happens to her good left eye. And so that's why we're trying to get these all treated. I don't think we have any word that it looks like the eye is just <clears throat> not salvageable. Even that worst one there, you'd be surprised at how good it should look here within just, I don't know, three or four days after giving her a dose of antibiotic. All right, so this first one here does not have the worst of the eyes. Of course, you can see the flies doing their thing and they're a big part of this problem. But, so pink eye is caused by the bacterial infection or the bacterial organism, uh, Morax bovis spread oftentimes amongst the cows by face flies. The, uh, what we're treating them with, we're actually using just oxytetracycline. There are a number of antibiotics that are effective against pink eye. And so we, we were basically making this choice um, primarily based on economics, very inexpensive. You do have to give a relatively large volume. Um, what will, you may see us do have since since previous videos is darting them you know if they're out in the pasture you don't have to catch them stress them we're starting out early this morning when it's still cool but uh, it's, it's starting to warm up um ended up with just four of them of course we got one calf in here too that didn't sort off quite so well but um the, the antibiotic you have to use to dart them is much smaller volume and but much more expensive and then the dart cost of that as well so we'd rather do it like this but Gonna get her out of there, give her this injection just subcutaneously. Large volume, so we will spread it out. Go over to the side. Yeah, even sub injections in the neck. And you do see some people even treat this with just like a subconjunctival injection in the eye, and that works, but so does this, and this is much easier, um, especially, you know, working by yourself. So, why make things harder if you don't have to? Here, thankfully, it does not have bad lesions on either eye, but it's got a mild one right there. 
little worse one over here on this right side. But it's freaking flies. So fly control is another important component to uh, preventing it or controlling it. We're doing a variety of things. You see they do not have fly tags right now. Um, but we're using fly spray when we're around feed bump, fly control mineral. And we also have back rivers up where they can try to keep these flies off. But uh, yeah, flies are a big nuisance when it comes to uh, pink eye. All right, so this here is the worst eye of all of them. You see really white and cloudy, stagum flies. Um, as you get up there close, pretty nasty looking lesion there. Now, I still think this eye is very much one we'll, we'll be able to save. She, she may always have a little bit of a scar there um, on the cornea, right you know, at the center of that lesion. But other eye, thankfully, totally fine. So get her treated, and uh, she's actually the last one. There was one other cow and she's kind of spooky that thankfully didn't really have you know nothing like this bad that we didn't get caught and so we'll have to keep a watch on her that may be a good candidate for the dart um kind of use it selectively in those cases where it's either just not practical to get them caught just for one or you have one that just won't cooperate but get her dosed and uh so that's the last one but bonus we have one calf from our springborns that never got calved, that black one over there, a um, little heifer. So while she's caught, um, we'll run her through here and get her tag too. She, uh, her mom is one of the more spirited cows, um, very protective, and so not one that we could safely um, get tagged back in the spring. So get her, uh, get her tagged as well. All right, so get her turned out. Go, mama. There you go. And uh, yeah, just now 7.30, but starting to heat up. I think it was only about low to mid 60s this morning. Felt felt nice, but uh, I think it's, we're gonna get up into the mid 80s, if not low 90s. So um, cool is not gonna last long. All right, so there's the elusive number 104, or soon to be number 104. Uh, see if we can do this one-handed. You got that right there. All right, you're tagged, baby girl. This took us a couple of months longer than it should have. All right, so. Yeah, I got a little bonus uh, task done this morning there, but her mom's actually the, the cow we were pointing out that has had the, the old problem in her eye that uh, left her with only one good eye. So, good cow, she always raises a good calf, and not, not just an incredibly crazy cow you would necessarily say but that that half brahma they are very very i guess you'd say maternal is the nice way to put it but uh very protective which it's not necessarily a bad thing i'm not gonna I'd rather have that than I always say I'd rather have one like that than one that i will abandon a calf um, that is absolutely worthless so we're gonna open the gate let these girls back out in the pasture and we're gonna head up a road check on the stalker steers and we actually got a few eyes that could be treated there but probably gonna have to wait on another day for that just because it's getting it's gonna be too hot you're gonna stress them too much um but gonna cut a little tree off the fence and see if we can get a few other little chores done all right and of course right now as we've been dealing with pink eye this morning be a good time to explain something else we do for fly control and that is with our cattle mineral and so the way it works the this mineral contains an insect growth regulator so the cows or in this case the stalker steers you know, consume the mineral that IGR passes through them into their manure the flies who then lay their eggs in the manure um, that those, those eggs are not viable and so it's essentially you can think of it as like a birth control for the flies so a new generation of flies can't exist um, at least not in the manure of those animals that have consumed this and so uh, another you know technique that you know a lot of the experts believe is really um, effective at helping control um, you know fly populations so get a little put in here you can see that mineral feeder is not completely empty I have to keep a block in there too, just so they, even if they do get all the loose mineral out, they 
they still have a block to lick on nothing else but so a few of them start to filter up here and uh brought them a little feed then we're gonna go get uh get that tree that we had found in the last video on the fence off which um if you didn't watch that last video you should have but uh, yeah get that fixed um should shouldn't take more than just a couple of minutes famous last words all right and so yeah you can see there's that little tree that fell on the fence thankfully it looks like it did not break any wire which is probably a testament to the fact that we put ran these newer wires or the three new wires back in uh the winter it was cool but we're gonna get that cutting off there which uh, that's one of the primary reasons we ran those new wires one it just makes it a lot more visible i don't know if you can appreciate it looking down through there you know those older rustier wires are still intact but just not nearly as as easy to see for the cattle but two you know a little more brittle you know i, I don't know that it would have broken had it just fallen on the old wires with nothing new there but um with the new wires it didn't so and we've done that the majority of the fence on this farm was existing whenever we bought this place almost three years ago but it was it was in really poor pair that hadn't been animals on it in several years so we went went and patched and fixed but still using mainly that old wire you know, for the majority of it but kind of trying slowly you know usually during the winter months when it's cool running at least three some places four new wires even where there's you know existing old fences in good shape but got a bunch more of that we need to do we've probably only done maybe 15 or 20 percent of of the total perimeter on this place but Get that sawed off there, and then I uh, might try to jump on that tractor and see if uh, see if the air conditioner will decide to work today. The, I guess it would, it would have been right after I ended the last video. We jumped on that tractor. We mowed for about an hour that day with no air conditioning. It never would kick on. So uh, I, I don't know how long I'll be able to bear that today, but may give it a little bit of a go and may get lucky and it, it try to work again. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I thought for a job this quick, I, it was just stupidity. I did not check fuel in the in the chainsaw before we left the house. Didn't fill it up, obviously. Didn't bring a fuel can, and it is completely out. We made it, oh gosh, at least three quarters of the way through this tiny little log, which probably one saving grace, maybe, is that it's enough where I can break it and uh can get this off there but don't get in a hurry slow down make sure you got everything you need just stupidity but anyway say so, see if maybe i can go all ninja on this thing er, hey looky there <laughs> had just enough fuel to get it cut just enough to get the job done so there we go all right so yeah it wasn't a huge tree or anything that fell but just enough we'll get those wires pulled back up and should have this spot secure and we'll move on to our next task okay so that is far from perfect so that wire it stretched it a little just those top two the top one are really stretched that old wire and so also really stupid of me that i didn't you know get looks like counter on the lens there i didn't take the time to throw just a bucket full of fencing tools you know on the back of the truck either then we would have totally had this job completely secured but it's it is secure like nothing's getting out right there but again it's one of those little things like It'll annoy me, it'll, it'll bother me that I left it like this. So we'll get that wire tightened back up here the next day or two. But okay, another small little task checked off the to-do list. All right, guess what? We have air conditioning 
today is actually my birthday, and so the best birthday gift I could have gotten is that this air conditioner is currently working, so uh, I, won't, I won't be melting uh, on my 38th birthday, but the, uh, the clutch on the front of the compressor is just not engaging, and I don't know what I did. I, uh, it, it is not fixed. It is just currently working, and fingers crossed, last time it we did get it to kick on and work. It worked until we quit running that day. And so we're uh, definitely not going to cut the tractor off till we're done. Um, probably going to stop for lunch now. We'll just roll on, get as much done as we can. My daughter has a softball game tonight, so I can only run uh, until probably about 3, 3.30 or so. But And probably should have enough fuel to do that too. So we're going to get some pasture clip now. Folded back out here and get to rolling again. Lower on down. As we get started here in this next pasture. I do want to mention if you're if you're into podcasts, you're looking for something to listen to, something maybe a little different. I joined my cousin now on his podcast, I guess twice. Um, we did it once about uh, 10 or 11 months ago last summer. Talked to the foreman. Just joined him a couple days ago again to, to kind of hit on some more of that. But it, the name of the podcast is Living Fully Loaded. Uh, he does a really good job. Uh, it's a lot of really cool guests, uh, a, lot, a lot of guests a lot more interesting than me, but you know, being family, I guess he felt obligated to invite me on and we talk a little, a little farming, uh, he's a row crop guy, so kind of hit on some of those sorts of things, current issues in agriculture, uh, as well as just nowhere's off limits, we, we kind of talk a little bit of everything, but anyway, yeah, go give that a listen. Uh, he does a really good job. Again, living fully loaded. Uh, it's up on all the podcasting platforms, whatnot, whether it's, I don't know what all they all are. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those. All right, so obviously as we treat those few cows with pink eye this morning, it'd be a good time to point out that, you know, another important part of, of managing, you know, and preventing, you know, those sore eyes or eye lesions, pink eye, is clipping pastures. Uh, you know, the, the scratches or abrasions to the cornea a lot of times you know, initially may start because of the grass you know, being too tall. Uh, we, we clip it for other reasons too. One, it just looks nicer. Um, but you know, get that old growth out, not those that tough uh, fibers pulling off the seed heads. Uh, make that new growth that's more palatable for the animals. But also, to help prevent a lot of eye problems. So, but we, well, we've been running almost two and a half hours or so now. I got a good bit knocked out. I'm gonna go a good bit longer, but maybe just about wrap it up for this video. We uh, you've got a few of those cows treated. Probably gonna have to do the same thing on some of our stocker steers. It just got a little too warm by the time we got over here this morning. Didn't want didn't want to stress them out. Um, we'll keep watching those closely. Um, again, encourage you to come back and watch. Watch again. I, I don't even know what we'll be doing in our next videos like usual. We've got plenty going on. Keep sharing with you what we're doing. But appreciate you watching. Again, we ask you to subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate that. If you've hung in there this long, give it a thumbs up. Apparently you may have liked it, but appreciate it. Everybody enjoy your day. Eat beef and God bless.